wow, this time it actually gave me a warning. It was like, whoa, you're about to go live. Are you okay with that? Are you ready? Check it out. Normally, normally it just does it. <laughs> I wonder what kind of feedback they get that tells them, you know, we should really add a warning. Yeah. Because you know? <laughs> I don't remember telling them that, or, you know, they don't ask me, but clearly they do the research somewhere. Yeah. Like, Something happened. Yeah. You know what I just realized? Last week's episode was episode 123. It was 123. I made no mention mm. of anything about it. I feel bad now. Opportunity missed. I know. It's too late. Well, you have another opportunity here. Not really. <laughs> Do something. All right, ready? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to episode 124 of the Furlough Bros Tech Podcast. Today is February the 9th, 2014. I'm Matthew Dean Furlow, and this is my brick-building brother, James Furlow. Yeah, that's right. Though I'm not really building bricks, I'm building snowmen. Well, because yeah. I know... I'll get there. Okay. I, um, because I am completely snowed in. Um, everything I was going to do this weekend got canceled, which is why it is we're doing this early. I mean, it's like I had meetings. Uh, I, I had one big meeting on Saturday totally canceled. I had on Sunday, I had, to say I had one, I had a meeting, I had church, I had a meeting, I had church, and then the podcast, and of those five, all four, four of them got canceled. Well, I'm so, here yeah. for you, James, because we had a crazy week of weather this oh, week. Oh, I bet you did. As of today, we have our, we've had our eighth inch of rain this entire winter. <laughs> wow. That's actually... <laughs> It's a, uh, it's, it's, yeah, I was going to say, it's horrible. It's actually really terrifying, or not, well, I, I mean, I say terrifying, and it sounds like, oh, no, good weather, that's terrifying, but, like, if you're not from California, um, the droughts, the summer droughts, like, everything burns, the whole state burns to the ground, and we've had really bad fires in the last couple of years, so this is bad, um, but... Not everything is bad, because I oh, bet no. you did something good last Friday. Oh, I did. I did. Friday night, I, uh, I went to the opening day of the Lego movie. Oh, and, man. And oh is it as amazing as it should be? It's fantastic. It is actually really? fantastic. Yeah. I, uh, I, when I first saw the trailer, I told myself, I am going to lower my expectations as far as humanly possible. Um, and then... And then Rotten Tomatoes... Raise them up for you. Oh my you. gosh, it was awful. Because which was kind of like, is everyone having fun with this? Because it's so bad. Let's rate it a hundred percent, or you know, because well, like, why not? You know, it's funny. Rotten Tomatoes is pretty, pretty predictable. It's pretty consistent, and I, I don't know. I was just worried. I was just worried because it was like you know, I, or I see. I figured I would enjoy it. I just didn't know what I was gonna enjoy about it. You know, you know what was gonna happen, but. But, right. You know, you know. But yeah, it brought my ex expectations back up, and then I thought they, uh, they kind of, um, it, it. They, I thought they hit it out of the park, and there were a couple of points. Really? Where, yeah, there were a couple points where I thought they were really uh, going off the rails a little bit, and then they brought it back, and it's just like they get right up to the cusp. You're like, oh, that's bro, that was just that was great storytelling. That was great storytelling. Hey, uh, hey, Jesse. Um, just want to let you know that Matthew can confirm that the Lego movie is amazing. It's an 11 out of 10. Yeah, so it's, we it's, need to go see it. Especially if you're a Lego fan at all. If you're, a, yeah, yeah, which yeah, both of us are. Obviously, I've got a like, I got, I have a Lego rocket ship on, you know, the the um, space shuttle, commemorative space shuttle, on my desk because. I'm a huge Lego fan, so this is just like. So was that was that scene where Batman's trying to throw the batarangs and he keeps missing, and then he finally hits it and goes first try. First is that try. just as funny as it was in the 
in the trailer? It is just as funny as it is in the trailer, except I've seen the trailer like eight times. So uh-huh. like as it's happening, you know it's happening. But there, but the the best part about it is that type of humor is pretty persistent and well delivered nice. throughout the entire movie. And nice. the, and and the cameos are fantastic because they get all the Lego parts in there and and just the different voice actors they got for the parts. It's just oh man. They just, I was and, reading an article, um, which I didn't link to, so you guys are out of luck, is um, they were talking about how just Nintendo is killing it, and how they were, I mean, I don't remember Lego? the exact dates, yeah, Lego, but there was a point in time where they were um, they were on track to go bankrupt, like they were, yeah. we were going to say goodbye to Lego, and it was going to be super sad, and everyone was going to cry, and they had, um, they had a leadership change, yeah, as it were. Which, by the way, this is foreshadowing, if you will. Um, yeah. They had a leadership change, <laughs> um, not for Palm, for something else, and yeah. uh, not. Oh my gosh, Palm Blackberry. That was a f- slip. Anyways, yeah. Um, he came in and essentially told the company, "We need to simplify way down," and um, you know, so they got rid of. They they sold off their parks. You know, they kept the names that are no longer actually run by Lego. They totally simplified down the um, the amount of Lego I mean, pieces this is, that they this had. Is, this is the amazing part to me is they went from it was something crazy like like four thousand different pieces down to like a, a thousand. They went they it wasn't like they scaled it back a little. They went through an unbelievable dramatic yeah. reduction in different pieces, and now adding new pieces is like a painstaking process in the company. It's yeah, not- and totally. Yeah. And what's interesting is, I mean, so it reduced their their um, uh, what do you ever want to call them? Your manufacturing right. costs. Yeah, and then um, and then they did get into the like, okay, we're gonna buy IP and do specific Lego sets. And Star Wars was the one that put them back on the path to glory. Yeah. And and they kind of they figured out that formula, so they went okay, we got it. And then they got on you know Harry I mean, Potter and the Marvel comics. Okay. And one one of the things that I really like is that all of this you know a lot of their IP is is owned licensed IP is owned by other movie execs, and there were yeah. very few of their of of the really star Lego sets that that didn't make it into this movie. I mean, and that's what's kind of what's cool about it, right? Is that it's like. It's not just the classic Lego pieces that make cameos and are are really cool. It's you know, it's Han Solo. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> you know? and, and now today, the company, the Lego company, man, I wish I didn't even think to do this article, but that's okay. Um, the Lego company today is now a bigger company than Mattel and Hasbro. Awesome. They're like I mean, like I said, they're killing it. They're doing awesome. Well, they're not going and, anywhere. And, and, it's fantastic. I, I actually want to do more research about how they've kind of like what they've done because one of the because one of the things that I find really interesting about the company is that um, you know I think everybody played the Star Wars games and the Star Wars Lego games and there is it's on oh yeah that's right there there have been a ton of Star Wars games made just just mountains of them and like of your top 5 it's pretty like universally accepted that um X-wing fighter Star Wars Battlefront yeah um, uh Jedi Academy um uh, mm. uh uh what was it um Star Wars uh um Force uh, Unleashed? The, no, not Force, Force uh, Unleashed. I know. That the is... Old Republic one. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, yeah, And yeah. the Lego Star Wars games are, like, the five greatest Star Wars games ever made. And, and you know, and it's just, like, how did the Legos... And one of the things that they did was that the, it was the comedic approach to it. It was the, yep. you know, it was just the, the goofiness of it. And so now that they're doing the Marvel thing, the Marvel video games are getting great reviews. Um, the the uh, um, the Indiana Jones one mm-hmm. got really good reviews. They just didn't do great in sales. Um, but you sit there and you go, like, one of the things that runs through it is just this childlike sense of, like, you know, of comedy through the whole thing, and and what I think is really interesting is that Lego were was building their own video games um, during this period of almost collapsing, and one of the yeah. first things they did was license video games away, and so there are they gave it to I think it's um, uh, T T I don't know that's their their initials I can't remember what the name of the company is, and that company is subsequently has subsequently relicensed. 
making uh, video games to other studios. So it's like there's many studios building all of these games that are Lego games, and um, but there's obviously this theme, which means somebody somewhere along the, the lines is controlling the you know the image of Lego video games, and a lot of those themes that are are funny and the com comedic sense of timing that makes those games great was also were also present in in the movies and it what it you know and I, it's hard to believe that that's a coincidence that just everybody would say hey that's a really good idea let's make a game that's funny and cool <laughs> which which me, leads me to believe that somebody somewhere along the line, lines probably at the Lego company is calling the shots saying no it's got to be this type of thing and, well and I'm gonna imagine they tried different styles and you can't do serious drama I mean that just doesn't yeah, that doesn't make any sense I mean they're face. Plastic pieces. Oh my god! You know what else is really oh, about them is um, you know just to continue the Lego love for a little bit here is it's been really fun to watch them identify markets and go after it right so so right they get the Star Wars fans they get the Harry Potter fans they do the space theme thing and then we've seen it where they do those uh, what I would call a mega model you know just yeah. those really big complex ones that cost hundreds of dollars to buy which I love and so do you. And then they've, and then they've realized that all these kids who grew up with Legos are now young adults, and you've seen those, uh, you know, I don't, what do they call them? They're like the micro models, or the ones that go on your desk. Yeah. They're usually all one color, like very the slick. Like architectural ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, that's awesome. And, and just two weeks ago, I was over at a friend's house, and I saw for the first time, and I just, I just smiled because they're gonna do it all over again. It was, it, it wasn't. Barbie, but it was dollhouse. So mm. all the pieces were pastels and a ton of pink. And this girl who was showing it to me, it's she essentially bought a dollhouse that she built herself. Yeah. And then all the little dolls and stuff could, you know, the, or the, the Lego figurines, whatever, the not dolls. Say the the chick market has been one of the hardest things. That's that is so. Uh, Dismissive. Yeah, the female so, market has been <laughs> one of the I, hardest things for I, I Lego to. Mean. Yeah, for one of Lego, one of the hardest markets for Lego to crack. And yeah. they and it's funny. It's you know it, it, this is like um, George R R or J G George R R Martin, the dude who wrote um, uh, the uh, uh, Game of Thrones and that entire series, of Song of Fire and Ice. The, okay. A lot of people have asked him. You know, you know that you write some of the best female characters of any writer, especially in fiction. Like, how do you do that? How? Where do you find all this inspiration mm. from? And he goes, I do one thing. I just remember their people. And you're like, ah. oh. <laughs> That's, wow, okay. And, uh, um, and it's funny. When you read it, all they're doing is rational things, defending their priorities and their families. And, and, and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. And they're just capable, strong human beings that happen to be the females of the family. Um, you know, and, and Lego finally has gotten their head on straight, where all of, you know, for the longest time, they actually, it was like the Duplo for little kids, you know, girl Legos were like not real Legos, they weren't interchangeable with Legos, Legos. and finally they've gotten their head on straight where they're like building real Lego sets, like you said. They're just pink. <laughs> they're a color palette that girls like. Yeah. You know, and but other than that, they're still the you know the the complex. They're they're interchangeable parts. They're still Lego, and that's what you know, girls have really similar brains to boys. Just it's a color palette thing that they want that's different. And yeah, um, and, and they're really smart. They're going. Their next step is going to be to partner up with Disney and create Frozen yeah. or I. I would actually consider this one Cinderella Castle. Oh man! Or oh, yeah. you know, yeah. Sleeping Beauty's Castle. You know, I yeah. mean, and just like and I'd get, a, I would get, a and then maybe not right away, but have that be one of the two hundred dollar castles that actually is like two feet in the air. You're just like, oh, yeah. That's oh, awesome. dude! Oh I my mean, gosh! The the Disney Castle. Yes, right. Which, by the way, Jesse and I are doing a Lego. Or not a Lego, a puzzle, which is like yeah. a Lego, I guess, in 2D. Um, of the, it's a Thomas Kincaid painting of the Disney World Dude, castle. Since Disney... we're snowed in, not going anywhere, we're like puzzle time. A, 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 you know, I Harry honestly, I would, I would be down to throw in. I don't know if, if you know, especially with my fam, our family man, there are people that would drop 
big money, big money on a on oh yeah a, a five thousand piece um you know Cinderella's oh, Disney World man, castle sweet just a gigantic one oh my gosh uh, and and he just like and you know it's not necessarily what I would buy but I could see a lot of people buy one and you know and it's yeah well and that's I mean and right it's targeting the market. Just right, right. I'm not gonna buy one of their dollhouse things, but right. I, I look at it and go, dude. But I know who would, and they would absolutely right. love it. But right. Uh, yeah. I so you know what? I'll, I'll be honest. Not say. only, not only does this make me want to go watch the movie, but it does make me want to go out and buy some Legos, which is dude, exactly I, what they want. I want some Lego. My favorite quote. <laughs> my favorite quote from any review. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm I'm going from memory, so let me. It was. I've never okay. watched a movie that tried harder to not sell me a product that made me <laughs> only want to run out and buy their product. Or that made, I've never seen a movie that tried harder to not sell me a product Classic. that made me want to buy their product more when I, after the movie was done. And it's so true. It's so true. You do not feel like you're being... And the, it, like, the cinematography of the movie is brilliant in a lot of ways. I'm like, I was blown away by some of it. And, um, and just, just brilliant and like beautiful in... in Capturing the essence of Lego, um, and then and <laughs> they have this. Po oh, geez. And then, but the but the other thing I wanted to the last thought I wanted to make, and this is where Transformers I think failed horribly, but Lego did brilliantly. When they built all their cool models for the for the movie, they're real models made out of real Legos. So when you buy the sets, really from the from yeah from them from the movie. That's brilliant. They yeah they're the actual sets. From the movie, they're part for part recreations, and you're like, there's no reason not to be able to do that. That's and really just, smart. And you say it drives me nuts that in the Transformer movies, they couldn't, they could have made these really accurate models where you build up these like trans, you know, that they're Transformers, a simplified version yeah, yeah. that for like your cheap twenty dollar toys that the ten year olds are gonna buy, but then. But then, you know, in the because the movies are going to be like more complicated and everything. But if you were to make them accurate, yeah. or you could actually make an action figure out of them, you could have easily sold a hundred and fifty dollar Optimus Prime to me. But they decided to not go that route, and that sort of thing, just like I don't even, I don't want one. I don't want one. I'm not interested in that. I want something that you had yeah, a chance yeah. here, and I'm and you and you turned me off to it. I want something you know really intriguing. But the fact that the like the Lego move, I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I want all of them. I want all of them so bad. <laughs> oh, so you know what though? We are not here this week <laughs> to talk about Legos. Although it is, it. it is one of my wouldn't favorite know it. companies. Fifteen and I, minutes later, I, say, I could talk about the Lego company for for so long, and I wish, I wish they spoke English. Otherwise, I would make it my life's goal to work for them. Um, mm. Cause I, be I just fun. I like America. They just a have lot. 3D printers everywhere, man. I because there was a there was a really cool life hacker article. Um, that they it was a few years ago that they went and did a trip there and walked through and did the, reviewed them and talked about it. It was super cool, and yeah, it totally makes you want to go work there when you're done. Yeah, but anyways, are, but this week, like every week, we are here to talk about technology and the continuing corporate opera. This one's a good one. And shockingly, and even bigger was, news. I know. And <laughs> when we talk about the corporate opera, what we're actually talking about is the soap opera of corporations dealing back and forth, the people working for them, which is quite important today. Their marketing campaigns, yes. and of course, the technology they're developing. But before we get into the heart of the show, um, James has got a short disclosure. I work for HP, but do not represent HP or any of HP's opinions or the opinions of their partners. Perfect. Um, if you want to follow us throughout the week, like say Microsoft. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, if <laughs> uh, if you. Uh, <laughs> if you want to follow us throughout the week, see pictures of you know me going to concert super late at night, or hear tweets about me going to the Lego movie. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Matthew D. Furlow. My Instagram is nextwigan4. That's two G's in Wigan, um, like Ender. I am at James Furlow and jamesfurlow.com. All right. And if you want to see all the clicks and links and videos from uh, this week's uh, show, unless we didn't link them, um, <laughs> James. Like our uh, first 15 minutes? <laughs> exactly. Uh, you can go to furlowbros.com. Uh, there we have the uh, podcast link if you're coming from YouTube, including show cuts. So if you don't want the whole thing, you just want little bite-sized pieces, you can get that feed as well. Um, if you're listening from the podcast, go there and get the YouTube link if you want to be able to watch this live and see all of our hand gestures. 
Um, yeah, so uh, it should be or, fun. Or head nods. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, anytime we're giving subtle body language and forget that we're uh, talking to you and not having you watch us. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, also, you can contact us there, comment and stuff. It's cool. Check it out. Um, I think you're a question. First. What do these things all have in common? Uh, <laughs> have you downloaded and played the game Flappy Bird? Of course, <laughs> everybody has. Have you? Yeah, I've gotten one okay, point. Okay, good. Well, so um, what's interesting is I was going to talk about it and the success of it. But it doesn't matter anymore because the developer this morning removed it from the App Store. So, yeah. and what I apparently think he got tired of people harassing him, which, from the sounds of the game, it sounds like it's impossible, as your score suggested. And um, people, for some reason, loved to hate it. So, yeah, but he was making next tons story. and tons and tons. Yeah, they were saying money. they were saying that he was making. Fifty thousand dollars a day in revenue from in-app ads, which I would have been like, "Yeah, you know what? People are harassing me. For that amount of money, I can hire someone to take it all, and then just give me, you the know, praise. the important stuff." Or, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's, you know, it's, the praise or like forward my actual emails to me. However, you want to think about that. Yeah, I, I was. It's it's yeah. It's funny. I mean, one of the things that I do think is interesting here is I think a lot of people yesterday were saying, "Well, this is obviously a big marketing ploy." You set it out on Twitter. I'm going to take it down from the App Store. I'm in the 11th hour or the 22nd hour. Um, in this case, mm. at the very end of the time, he has a change of heart and thinks you know. So many people downloaded the, the app that I'm going to keep it on the store, and everybody goes out because you've only got 22 hours to get the hottest game in the App Store. Um and uh, and everybody was like, obviously this is a a brilliant marketing ploy because you're gonna go out and you if you if you had any thought of downloading it, you're gonna go and download it and play it at least once because you know you know what, what you know what yeah. do you, you know what do you well have to I lose? honestly so my plan was to not download it and then have hope that you hadn't played it and then have you try just to watch you get frustrated um on you know live but that plan backfired on me but yeah yeah well, interesting i i don't know maybe he hit his his number um you know where he was like all right i'm good i can retire i don't need to put up with yeah. this anymore and he's still they say if you still download it you can still play it which means he's still going to get the revenue so i'm sure it will go down but i wouldn't be shocked if he's still making 40 to 30 thousand dollars a day for the next couple months and right you know you that's know, retirement money I, right I, there I, I think it would be interesting, and I hope somebody gets to the bottom of what, why he actually, why he pulled it. Because I think, you know, obviously yeah. it wasn't a. Well, if anything, as the game stuff. shows you, is, yeah, if the game show teaches you anything, is that he hates people and he loves to drive them nuts, and so he is consistent on that level. Yeah, you know what? That is a, that is a good point. Um, so there you go. So, but that actually, honestly, was, um, you know, so we're going to skip that one in as, you know, yeah. as much as it is. And I'd rather talk about something that will hopefully come to pass. I saw this uh, friend posted it on Facebook this month. And from what I understand, this thing's actually been around for a couple years, but they keep getting closer and closer to it. It is an air-powered car. Crazy, right? right? It actually, um, you know, it puts air pressure, you know, it pressurizes air, and then you drive it around. It's got a, a range of about a hundred miles, and it costs about a dollar per tank of air um, because you've got to, you know, put it together. They're like, but if you, you know, you actually got to pump, you know, suck it in from the outside. They're like, but if you had a windmill that could power the air compressor, they're like, it'd be free essentially. Right. So, of course, you know, it's a concept car, so it looks a little crazy, um, you know, in the sense that it's got three wheels and it's got two joysticks in the front, and so, it's, you know, it's not your classic car, even though they do have a bigger version of it. And um, the other cool part about this that I love is that they're going to sell this bad boy for $10,000. Wow. Wow. Seems, I... seems a little low, right? Yeah, I was going to say that's remarkably affordable. 
Yeah, so they've got a whole bunch of um, you know third world countries essentially. India, South and South America are super into it. Um, there's a part of me though that's like, you know, that's neat, but why not charge fifteen or twenty thousand dollars? Get some real funding going, and that way you can actually, you know, do something very cool. Think Tesla, right? Where you know it doesn't cost. Well, it probably does. It doesn't cost them. Yeah, or I should say, you know their margins are fantastic, I should yeah. say, which allows them to do the development for further vehicles, to do some very interesting things, and because of your gas savings and whatever, they can still rationalize it out. I look at this one, a buck per tank, that's pretty darn awesome, and you know, I mm -hmm. think people would be willing to spend $20,000 on this little gizmo I'm thing. I'm surprised that they're not trying to compete with golf carts. Um you know, and and just looking at the size of it, they're obviously pretty small and stuff. But they're, you know, they seem that my first reaction just looking at them is they look like golf carts, um, you know, fully covered and stuff. Yeah. And I I wonder I wonder if there's a there's something that I don't understand that would explain why they're not really compatible for, with golf carts. You know, whether they don't have the power or if they are, you know, or golf carts are just you know more efficient. But golf carts are expensive. It's not like they're super affordable. Um, I mean, yeah, it's true. They're like five you know. grand. Right. So you know, I, I, just, yeah, I wonder, I wonder why. I wonder, I wonder what the, uh, what the compelling reason is there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Or maybe there's just no it's cost. It's called an AirPod. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's called an AirPod, and uh, it still might be a while because, like I said, they've been talking about it for a couple of years, but it's just starting to reach that tipping point where they're like, all right, we're going to start selling these things. We're actually going to start manufacturing them. That's cool. Pretty cool. So I'm just keeping like you it. all on the forefront of technology. Perfect. Here it comes. Be ready. Cool. Very cool. All right. So uh, this is also a technology that is coming, um, and more and more, I'm being completely sold on the fact that I'm going to have to buy one of these, and so I'm going to have to figure out how to afford it. Um, but basically, so the last couple of weeks, we've talked about some uh, some gaming stuff that I thought was really cool. Last week, we talked about the destruction of two hundred thousand dollars worth of. Um, digital stuff mm. in the game EVE Online. Um, a couple weeks before right. that, we talked about um, Val EVE, or we talked about the Oculus Rift at uh, at CES, and they were demonstrating an in cockpit game, like a game where you're like in the cockpit, you could see all sorts of stuff, and it was doing head tracking. Well, that game that they were demoing was EVE Online Valkyrie. Um, or E Valkyrie, as they're calling it, and uh, uh, basically, which you know, like it looked really cool. Everybody said it was amazing, um, but there wasn't. It was it was more of a demo. Well, Oculus has officially announced that they will be co-publishing E Valkyrie, but rebuilt specifically for the Oculus. Um, cool. And yeah, that makes me want that really. Really, really bad. Cause so you're essentially like a in, yeah, yeah, in cockpit flying around. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just you know, it's a you know, it's it's funny. I mean, like it's the sort of thing that it's like this is this is what I want. This is these these are the kind of things that it's like you know, if you're just it's it's got high enough graphics ability to make Eve look really good. Um, it's a yep. giant space sim, you know, and so you, all, if all you're doing is going flying around space with 3D, you know, goggles on and, you know, and like fully immersive sound and everything so you can look around and play on, and you're doing it from like inside the cockpit of your spaceship and you're going around and like mining stuff and doing things and all of a sudden you're in the middle of like a space battle, this sounds like... Um, I, I I don't even I don't even know how to articulate how excited I am about this sort of a thing. Like, I you know I this this is just this is amazing. This is really 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 cool. Um, it's just oh man, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I you know something. I feel like and you know it's it, I, I talk to guys of you know I'm so obviously I work in the semiconductor industry in the Silicon Valley. So 
I have guys that have been deeply entrenched in technology um, and been right on the cutting edge for the last 30 years. Um, I work for guys like that. I'm, I, I partner with guys like that. And you hear all their stories, and they always talk about how it's just amazing what happens every 10 years. I mean, it's just like the world is completely different every 10 years. And um, and and it's just it's impossible to imagine what it'll be like in 20 years. It, you just you can't. And it just moves too fast. But I sit there and I go like, and this is a perfect example. Like thinking back to video games I played like in the middle of high school compared to this, it's just a completely different ballpark. It's a completely different league of games, right? Um, and and of of a virtual experience. Um, and, oh, dude, it's just so exciting. It's so exciting. So I'm I'm pretty optimistic. And this and it's funny. This is the other thing. Oculus Rift needs something more than just being super impressive technology. Um, there's a lot of consoles that have been really super impressive. What they need is titles that sell the system. They need content. And, you know, and that's one of the things that, that the guy that they hired, um, John, it's not John Cusack, that's somebody completely different. Um, the guy from id Software, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he uh, who, and he left id, and because he came, he went to his bosses and basically said, look, I want to build VR games, and they said, it's not going to happen, and he said, okay, I quit, <laughs> and joined the Oculus team as the chief technology officer, and, um, and the fact that he's gone there, you know, a really high-powered game developer who has a deep passion for VR, tells me that not just Eve Valkyrie is going to be this, but there's going to be more and more games that are going to be really dedicated to this type of thing, and, and I think you're going to see very quickly that there will be games that are just a completely different ballpark because they're you know they're on they're in the they're, they're on the Oculus and so I'm I'm really excited and I can't wait and I I I want one real bad so my my thought here is I got to figure out time frames and costs so I can start to figure out what that actually means for me <laughs> but that's cool yeah that is very cool I will admit that I would not mind having one either yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, James. Right now, but once I get one and you come and what? visit, I'll let you. I will let you play as long as you want. You'll let me watch you play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, that headset sure looks like a headset. Wow, that's so amazing. I bet that feels great. Yeah, it does. Mm. You should totally try it next time you come. <laughs> <laughs> you should get one. It's great. I understand. Dude, we totally used to do that. Remember, like friends would come over. We'd They'd start playing the game, and they'd be like, wait, you're doing it wrong. Here, let me show you. Oh, Before man. you knew it, we were playing the game, and our friends were off doing something else. We were those I, people. Yeah. Well, in our defense, I think that was pretty common for all... All kids did that at, at some point, I think. They, everybody has a similar memory of that. Um, I hope. <laughs> let's hope. <laughs> Don't know, but let's hope. That's funny. That's funny. Cool. All right, is it time? I guess it's time, dude. I'll, uh, do I get to... Right. Oh, my name's on the top one. I get to break this news. Okay, everybody. You did it Brace first. Brace yourselves. Um, oh, wait a second. So I tried to remember how to pronounce his name, but I don't. Um, Satya. Satya Nadalia. Na Nadella. Nadella. Satya? Okay, we're going to go with Satya. So, Microsoft um, obviously has been in turmoil since the, com the company is completely collapsing. Um, there's, they've got all the wrong momentum. Their sales have been terrible. They're, they're losing money hand over fist. Actually, very little of that is true. Um, they pretty much have just been staying the course, which has been driving their investors crazy. Um, because what they're seeing is Facebook, Google, and Apple, um, and and Samsung, and uh, uh, Lenovo, and other companies like that who aren't just staying the course at having explosive, unbelievable growth, and their investors are like, what's up, Microsoft? What's going on? Why aren't you doing that? Um, and uh, it's it's called into question basically the entire leadership of the company. Um, obviously, uh, Steve Ballmer announced he was going to step down. And uh, uh, Gates has gotten some guff as being the chairman of the board. Um, and, and 
one of the, the the big reason more than anything that it's justified that you know maybe he shouldn't be the chairman of the board is he's funding the greats the the greats the Gates um, Institute with by selling his stock and as time goes on um, he has a smaller and smaller stake in the company um, and at some point it doesn't make sense for him to be the chairman of the board because he's not the you know he's not a big enough stakeholder, um, and and he he's you know spending more and more time there, um, and so you know but the, but there's also a question of you know you're the chairman of the board what's going on with the company like you know why isn't the company going to this growth do you care um, and you know probably <laughs> he probably cares um, but so anyway Steve Ballmer steps down and they go through this like. Um, long process to find a uh, um, a new CEO for the company, and as of Tuesday, they finally announced that. Um, how do you say his name? Satya. Satya. I can't. Every time I look at it, I like I blank because it's Satya. Um, is a uh, yeah. Well, I thankfully I, I listened to a video when someone else said I went oh okay because I kept thinking like Satya. Yeah. It's a soft A. Yeah. He is Indian. Yeah. If that helps, probably not. Yeah. Well, I, it does help. I think. Um. But he. Uh, um. Yeah. So he's been named as the new. Uh, the new. CEO of uh, Microsoft. So. Uh, yeah. Bottom line, it for me, James. Good thing or bad thing. Hmm. That is the question, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Depends, really. I don't know enough about him. There are a couple good things, a couple bad things about him. Oh, and one line, of the articles I read simple. that I will probably <laughs> Just never be able to find um, will, uh, you know, mentioned it. So, like, f for example, he came out of the the server division. Yeah. Okay? So, so for and starters, he is a he is a 22 year alum, not alumnus, but. Veteran. Vet, thank you. Veteran of Microsoft. He's a lifer. So, yeah, he's he's been there. Yeah, since he was so like which, I, yeah, which I would actually say is a knock against him. That's just me. <laughs> um, you know, where if you want to bring in new thinking, clearly he's not new. Um, though he'll definitely run it like his, you know, his own style eventually. Um, so that's against him. Some good that's going for him, again, is he's from the server group and he's got experience there. I actually was reading this. I saw this really cool article that was saying that with his appointment, now the search CEOs run Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft because, hmm. you know, obviously Larry Page knows a little bit about search and is running Google. Uh, Marissa Meyer, Mayer, knows a little bit about search and is running Yahoo. And I didn't know this until I read this, but before Sacha was put in term, put in charge of the servers, he was put in started, put in charge of MSN Live, and then changed it over to Bing before yeah. leaving that group. Which you know, as much as much fun as it is to knock Bing, let's all remember that Bing not only is you know Yahoo and Bing make up take up second and third place for most returned results, but Bing powers all of Yahoo's uh, search results. So in the in reality, yeah. you know, Bing is is uh, it is a far second to Google, but Google's got like sixty percent of all searches, and Bing's got like twenty. It's which you know when you're talking about an incumbent, the you know the quality and size of of Google, that's an astounding yeah. achievement. You know, it's it's not it's 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 a it is a you know and and. I, I never use Bing, but I know a lot of people that use Bing for certain specific tasks that they like, you know, and they sit there and they go, yeah, it's way better than, than Google for whatever. And there are countries where Bing is the favorite, um, you know, and and by a good mar margin. Um, so it's, yeah. you know, it, it's... And it, I would say, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to say, so I, I guess my point I was just going to say... <laughs> I guess my point with Bing is that uh, is just to bring that all up is that it's a good product and I think I think it's had a lot more it is a lot more successful than um, pop culture gives it credit for 
And when you actually look at the numbers, what it's done versus what you should expect it to do, it wasn't gonna knock Google off of the king, you know, off of being king of the hill. Um, and it's it's taking a lot more ground from Google than I think a lot of people expected it to, you know, in reality. Obviously, they hoped that it would completely crush Google, but you know, you know. <laughs> so okay. Yeah, um, and I honestly I think that um, you know. Just straight up searching on the web is not that important, but as we move further down this post PC era and more importantly move away from classical file structures, I think search on devices and on servers wherever are going to become immensely important. And you know, and so to have a guy who at least gets that, you know, he's obviously not going to be the one implementing it, but the one who goes, no, 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 we can let's just search for it. It's okay. Uh, I think having a guy who gets that will be critically important. Right, and and when you think about you so know uncon whatever it is they're making. Right, and when you think about unconventional like you know technologies working together, much the same way that that you know Microsoft's our our window our window phone seven, um, window phone eight, uh, keyboard the window phone's keyboard is like. This critically acclaimed keyboard, and a lot of that credit is given to the fact that they have such an immense history of autocorrect. That's like they just that's a huge strength of Microsoft, and they lent that computer science to the autocorrect um, on the keyboard, effectively all as all it was, and that built a, a really really robust, reliable keyboard. Where that that cross you know strength is something that I think long term is you know. Google's ability to look at phrases and searches and just take anything and turn it into uh, we understand what you're asking as you're asking it and give you the most relevant information for that is going to long term you know turn something turn their their Google assistant their Go or their Android assistant their Siri com Siri competitor that's going to turn out even more powerful than Siri ever, Siri ever could be. Just the nature of what the company's core competencies are. You know, they're like they've said, you know, before. They're trying to build the computer from Star Trek, and I think long term you're going to watch Apple Siri move that direction as well. And they're probably going to buy somebody in order to to make up lost ground on that on that competency. And the fact that you know that uh, Sasha is has that background and that comprehension means that. As Google continues to push that computer science forward over the next, you know, um, decade and really make some huge progress, he's going to understand what they're doing. And when people come to him and say, "Hey, this is what we need to get great at too," he's going to say, "Okay, let's do it." And you'll see, you know, you'll see that. And I, th I, I'm, I'm a fan of the idea that I think that, you know. A single interface that you can either type into or talk into in order to, you know, give you a central control of your computer and your phone is going to be more and more and more important. And I think, you know, and I, and I think that he, you know, he's going to be more equipped for that than somebody who's, you know, great at building Xboxes. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I, there was in an article they were t another article they were talking about. You know, here's some of the challenges he faces, and one of the in um, an investor, you know, analyst, those type of people. The way they said it is, he is the right person to drive safe right down the middle of the fairway and continue Microsoft's strengths. What we don't know is, will Nadella help with the consumer revival or with the mobile revival? Mobile is an open hole in his background. So you're right, that is one strength. But another weakness of his is the mobile space, just because he doesn't have any experience there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you ask, is he going to be good? Is he going to be bad? You know, I wouldn't be shocked if we find Microsoft becoming more and more of a, um, uh, what do you want to call it, an enterprise company, a la HP. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, uh, you, you know, because that's where his strengths are. That's what he's comfortable with. Clearly, he believes in it. Um, but do you think that he'll be able to, you know, not knowing him or? <laughs> there, it's it's funny, you know. I'm I'm shooting from the gut here. I'm I'm absolutely shooting from the gut That's here. That's all I'm, we got. I'm I'm, That's all I'm we spitballing. Got. But my instinct is going to be this. I don't think they're going to make up a lot of ground in China with their mobile stuff because of his leadership. But I think they are going to see growth and continued growth. 
um, with that market because I think they're going to do better in India than anybody's going to expect. They're already doing better in India with their Nokia purchase, and the fact that he's actually was born Indian and you know came to America, you know, so he's he's a he's a, a naturalized immigrant. Um, you know, yeah. means that he has a cultural background that guys like Tim Cook has to hire somebody to, to hey, tell me what's tell me what to do in India. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whereas yeah, uh, you know, Sacha has got family there, has got yeah, history there, grew up there. It's true. And obviously, he spent long enough here where it's not you know he doesn't have a super connection to it. But my gut would be if you came to him with two products and said which one of these is going to sell better in India, he of all of the CEOs, you know, Larry Page, Tim Cook. And, and him, he's going to be the one who says that one, probably that one. <laughs> you know, and that one's going to do that's better. That's true. You know, and and so it's like that's I, you know, true. and I, and I mean that that's and you could win India and do just fine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And They're and, and India is a huge open playbook. Apple's spending tons of money to try to not lose India right now because they've. Basically ceded that territory China in in large measure. You know they're they're okay yeah. playing only in the you know only in the super rich parts of China. They're a okay with that. They've decided that that's what they're going to do. And you know they want to have it on every carrier, and they just wanted that. They want that top three percent of Chinese who can afford it, and they'll take their their margins and they'll walk away and be happy. But in India, it's a completely different ballpark. There's actually places for them to go and things to do, and it's like they I you know I was reading an article probably. This week, where they've restarted manufacturing of the 4s specifically for India because they're affordable in India, um, and huh. so it's and and the Nokia, the low end Nokia phones are doing great in India. Most of their growth is in India, and so I think that there's you know there's a real market there for mobile. And if you could get a foot ground, uh, foothold somewhere to justify the department, you know. Even if it's not America, eventually you can grow to other places, and and right. you know you just need a stronghold. And um, America has a stronghold in in America. Or America, Apple has a stronghold in America. America does and, have a stronghold yeah. in America. Yes, <laughs> nice job, guys. Teamwork. <laughs> Nailed um, it. <laughs> Um, you know, and you know, Android obviously has one in China. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, if you could take India, that that would be huge. Um, so you know, but but there's a bigger, broader question of you know, building consumer goods and stuff. Yeah, can can he do that? Um, I, I don't know. I it's you know, I okay. So you know, I, if you've listened to this show, you know, my opinion of of Microsoft is that there are some incredible computer scientists and engineers there. Um, it, it's it's not like it's a complete brain drain like BlackBerry. No. Um, it, the the great ideas have a very hard time rising to the top. Um, and and have in the last ten years, I think. And there's been some stifling stuff that's just been that um, Steve Ballmer is you know blamed for. One of the big things is their is their employee ranking system, where it's a zero sum game. Um, if you're not the best, or if you're not better than you know, if somebody's better than you, you're graded poorly a, a, against it. Even if you're both both great, if that guy's greater, then you're in trouble. Um, and and it made for a very, you know, uh, contentious, you know, backbiting area. Yeah. But even beyond that, you know, Balmer liked to pit the different departments against each other, so they actively worked to, you know, to, to against each other. And where and and there were evidence of like music services that would work on some Microsoft devices, but not on others because. One department would they they there's one department that they're friends with another that they're competing with so they would support it for the departments that they're friends with and not for you know the Xbox division and you just like what the heck is this like, business yeah. yeah and so I sit there and I go you know yeah it it'd be really good for him to have an understanding of you know of mobile but what's really the most important thing I in my opinion is that unlike Balmer. He can get the guys who and girls um, who really understand the best technology and build the best products and get them building the best products and technology. You know, Tim Cook's job wasn't isn't to build the best iPhone. His job is to make sure that Johnny Ives is happy and if he needs a coffee, he'll get some a coffee. Um, you know, <laughs> and and if yeah, if pretty much. 
if Sasha can do that, um, if he can find a Johnny Ives and make sure his coffee's always warm, um, I think that he will have success where other people, you know, don't. he's smart. And that's the one thing that I think is, like, really, really clear from the little bit of bio that I get. Yeah, he's crazy smart and, and like, like scary. I, I No wonder I'll never be, you know, a successful CEO because of, you know, a multi-billion dollar company because you got to be like that guy. <laughs> he's really smart and he learns, like, crazy, too. Um, and he's relatively young. That's well, the other thing. He's young. You know, well, yeah, forty-six, I believe. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's funny. I mean, you say you got to be really smart. Uh, I don't know what the size of Ford was when Henry finally left, but you know, his famous quote. You know, when they asked to his success, uh, or how did it go when you know they were interviewing him? They, you know, some journalists or whatever were interviewing him to try to figure out like, all right, how smart is this guy? And so they'd ask him some question. And Henry Ford would go, yeah, I don't know. Let me get my, you know, manufacturing guy in here. And he'd ask him, hey, how much is blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that person would give the answer. And he goes, okay, there's your answer. And then he'd ask him another question about, like, tires. You go, all right, well, let me get my tire guy in here. And then he'd ask him, hey, what is this answer about tires? And that person would give the answer. And he'd go, okay, there it is. And they're like, this journalist takeaway was like, dude, Henry Ford's not very smart at all. He doesn't know anything going on with his company. He's an idiot. And, and Henry Ford's quote was like, no. I am successful because I have learned how I have learned to surround myself with individuals who are smarter than I am. Right. And you know, and you know, and to which you're like, oh wow, Henry Ford's really smart. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, yeah. at, at least self-aware and understood what it took to be successful. It's not about him; it's about the team and yeah. you know, and the people underneath, letting them, uh, you know, freeing them up to do what they do. And and I think. And, and eventually I will, um, you know, yeah, anyways, um, I think that, you know, part of the job is to do that, is to find and to attract and retain really, really smart people. And and so he runs the risk of being one of those smart people, but you know what? You look at the Google CEOs, clearly they're not idiots. They're like say, crazy smart. I, I, guess, I guess my point was, I, I you know, in saying that is that when people say, you know, he doesn't have a background in in smartphones. It's like, hey, have you met this guy? I, the only reason he doesn't have a background in, in smartphone operating systems is because he hasn't spent a year doing it. Give him 20 minutes. Yeah. He'll catch he hasn't it. had to. <laughs> right, yeah. He's, yeah. I, don't, I don't fear for his ability to understand and, you know, and see the course forward. It's all about his leadership. Is he a good leader? You know? Well, so that's what I was about to say is... Um, you know, all of that's important, but the most important aspect of it is leadership. And I was reading an article um, by John Gruber, who is an Apple fanboy through and through. Oh, yeah. Which is why it's always interesting to hear his, you know, opinions about Microsoft. And um, But one of the points that he brought up was to have, to be able to create a vision for people to follow. Yeah. You know, and, and he goes, that's super important. So I'm, it's a little long, but I'm going to read it anyways because I thought it was really good. Is um, you know they so he was talking about how uh, what's his face um, Bill Gates who we will talk about in a little bit here um, a little bit more you know he had a vision of right it was every what was it uh, a computer on every desk in every yeah. home or something like that and then it was like dot 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 running Windows <laughs> yeah yeah essentially you know that was their internal one. And then he talked about, and then he got into the thing of, um, you know, with the smartphones. And and what I thought was really interesting is here, um, let me see, I, I think I'll pick this up in the right way, was, um, you know, talking about how they struggled with it. He, so was, he says, what they missed was the next step from every desk and home, a computer in every pocket. He goes, it's worse than that, though. They saw it coming, and they tried. Pocket PC, Windows CE, Windows Mobile, swings and misses at the next big thing. They weren't even close. Steve Ballmer didn't even... Oh, and even worse, Steve Ballmer didn't even seem to realize it. That's what's so bad about that video of him laughing at the original iPhone. Whenever I dredge up that video, a handful of defenders will all write to tell me it's unfair to mock him for his reaction, and that he was actually right. The original iPhone was too expensive. But what should have scared Microsoft wasn't that the iPhone wasn't what the iPhone was in 2007. 
it was what the iPhone clearly was going to be in 2008, 2009, 2010. Prices come down, chips get faster, software evolves. Apple had unveiled to the world a personal computer that fit in your pocket. That was amazing. That the original iPhone left so much room for improvement is simply the way revolutionary products always get their start. Microsoft's institutional lack of taste, again, he's biased, um, had finally come to bite them in the butt. While Bomber laughed at the iPhone and presumably walked around with a Windows Mobile piece of junk in his pocket, Larry Page and Sergey Brin carried iPhones. Google never laughed at the iPhone. It made money from it by providing web search and maps. Google quickly became, and remains to this day, a leading developer of iOS apps. Sure. It was Google that was fast to follow the iPhone with Android, slurping up the commodity market crumbs that Apple, focused as ever on the quality-minded high end of the market, eschewed. Now, I, um, I don't think it was ever within Microsoft's DNA to produce the iPhone, but what Android became, the successful fast follower, could have been theirs if they'd recognized their opportunity faster. Now, this is what's interesting. The Microsoft of 1984, a decade away from industry dominance, wrote software for the original Mac and learned from it. When Bill Gates saw, first saw a Mac, he didn't laugh. He wanted to know how it worked, right down to the specific details, like the smooth animation of its mouse cursor. You're just like, ooh. That's, I mean, it's really, you know, he's making fun of Steve Ballmer. And so he goes, so, Satya Nadella needs to find Microsoft's new, a computer on every desk in every home running Microsoft software. Here's my stab at it. Microsoft services, sending data to and from every network device in the world. The next ubiquity isn't running on every device. It's talking to every device. So that was super long, but the point being, um, you know, again, talking about the mobile and you know, are, his we, leadership is he... You have to save that article. Save that article. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes you, like, you read stuff, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, you just, that was, that was articulated just about perfectly. And you wonder, have you had that knocking around in your head for, like, a decade and just have never bothered to say that out loud before? Because I read a lot of John Gruber, and he's never said anything like that before. Um, or was this just one of those mo moments of brilliance where it just sort of all coalesced at the right moment, the right triggers went off in his brain? Because that's, I, I mean, that 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 sums it up so perfectly, the difference in the reactions. I mean, and, you know, and they talk about Google from head to, head to toe, you know, not just Larry and Sergey walking around with iPhones, but... You know, but to the very core of the the leader of the Android team during the during the keynote had you know we talked about that story a month or two ago where he was in his he was driving to talk with manufacturers about the earliest forms of Android. He's in his like his limo and he had the guy pull over so yeah. he finished watching the keynote and realized that I can't go talk with these guys. We have to rebuild Android. You know, and as any when you contrast that against you know Microsoft's. Um, you know, response and 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 even like you said, and even more crazily against you know Steve Gates or yeah, Bill Gates, not Steve Gates, Bill Gates, Bill Gates you know, reaction um, uh, to you know to the Mac, you know, and, and obviously that's a little bit different, but it, uh, but at the same time it's pretty similar, you know, and and yeah, and and it's funny, I mean, and it's you know. Uh, you know, a computer in every pocket is a big one, but there's other ones out there. You know, like they clearly, clearly, the iWatch is coming. Or you know, a watch is coming, and it may not be. It may not be Apple. Like you know, they're going the health route. That's clearly what they're doing. Um, you know, they want to make make the best health device out there. But you know, the the I've I'm you know, and and I and I think anybody who's ever thought about watch technology in general, you realize you go from giant clocks that are one for the entire city to grandfather clocks that don't move but are like large you know centerpieces of the house to yeah. you know to to desktop clocks to pocket watches to wrist watches they kept getting smaller and finally the wrist watch was the personal watch that everybody the personal thing that everybody went with what does the interface look like how does it work what does it do I, I don't know I can't answer that question very few people can but clearly well that's I think the I'm same like you trend. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, and I actually don't know if that's the right one. Um, because the iPhone is not a phone. It's a computer. Right. And so it went from, you know, this is a mainframe that is in your entire room, can't take it yeah. anywhere, to eventually, uh, you know, a desktop 
that you got to have plugged in to a laptop, and now you know, and now it's a phone, and you know the size. Now it's the size of a phone, I should say. Right. And sure, it's got phone capabilities in it, and you know, and I look at it and go, and the next one is going to be the size of a watch, the size of a pair of glasses, I, you know, who knows, the size of yeah, something that's even more personal. So, but I think both of them, yeah, together. Just go, yeah, it and, totally makes sense. But, and I, and, but and the he, question is, and we just don't know, is he the guy who's going to be able to look at something like that and instead of laughing it off, go, ooh, that's pretty cool. Let's right. study it. Let's get to know it. Let's become friends and let's get close to our enemies. And, 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 and what's even, you know? Yes. Yeah. And what's even more interesting and, and, and the really the biggest question I think you have to ask is, is he the type of guy who won't just look at competitors and say we can we can do what they're doing and do it better but is he going to listen to guys in his own company the brilliant guys in his own company who say hey this is a cool idea i had you mind if i spend you know a couple minutes working on it this week and is he gonna go? Yes, please. <laughs> you know, or is he gonna go? You know, is he does does he have that vision? That that's the that's the those are the two big questions. Can he can he get the can he attract and get smart guys? And can he can he sense things? And does he get excited about the future? And you know, just just reading about him and seeing what he's done with the company, I got a feeling he he does. I, I have a feeling that he's got enough of it where you'll see Microsoft doing well in the next couple of years. Um, you know, it might take so, a few. Yeah. Yeah, it might take a few years. But and so this is where it also gets a little interesting here. And so I want to wrap back to this. So there's a new technology advisor. Yeah. So yeah, because Mr. Gates told everybody, hey, you know what? I agree. I shouldn't be the chairman of the board. It doesn't make sense anymore. Um, I want to realign my priorities in the company. Um, so as he takes less time being the chairman of the board, because just his his position doesn't really, you know, where he's at, it doesn't really make sense. But he still wants to be, you know, intimately involved. Like you said, he uh, is moving around and uh, going to be making technology advisory decisions. Yeah. So it sounds like he'll just be meeting with. Um, you know, different dev groups and hearing them out, making advice, doing what he does, which sounds kind of awesome to have that job. No, no. So, oh, yeah, tell me what you're working on. What if you did this? Boom, okay, I'll make, oh, see you later. Go do all the work. I'm going to yeah. go blow up another team. Right. Um, sounds like fun. Sounds a lot like what Steve Jobs did at Apple, uh, where he was meeting with the guys regularly. And so, such as not going to be doing that as much it sounds like and maybe that's his way of saying yeah you know what I'm not a, I'm not great at this part of it and we need someone who's going to see that next big thing and say yeah you know what do spend the next two months and develop that let's let's pursue that that's worth pursuing yeah. I don't know I think it's be I think a little interesting with you know having gates down your shoulder I don't think gates will ever become CEO but man it you know it it sounds a little bit like uh, a certain Apple-esque situation. <laughs> Sounder yeah. comes back. Oh, I'm not in charge. I'm just here to help out. I'm just an advisor. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it's tough because I think I think Bill Gates. Yeah, it's it's different. I get yeah. it. But I think Bill Gates really actually at the you know it it is different and and I think what's interesting about it is that you know I, and 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 I think this is important to to mention you know at this point Bill Gates has changed the world and now he wants to save the world like. You know, uh, he he actually, you know, uh, if you if you study his belief system, you know, he's he's he, he believes that he gets this this little allotment time on Earth, and the difference he makes is the difference he makes, and then after that he becomes dirt, and you know, and that affects what he does with his time in a big way, and um, you know, he and knowing him, he probably thinks board meetings are boring. And it's just something he has to do, and now he has an excuse to not right. do it anymore. And you know, yeah. dude, I don't care. I get I get to do things that are fun. I get to be on that cutting edge, right? And I get to see that stuff, and that honestly is probably super exciting to him. 
Right, and and what I was going to say is that he is clearly and indisputably very intimately involved in the technolo technology decisions and directions that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is going. Like he, you know, he, he's he's really he is the advocate, the voice of their technology. Anytime somebody's got to talk about we're building lasers that kill mosquitoes or we're recreating how contraceptives work yeah. or we're, you know, whatever he's you know we're 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 reimagining power systems he is you know is is the voice of that because he he's intimately involved in it and so it, it you know it's it's who he is um the the one big question that that I think is you know fair to ask is that clearly you know he knew that the whole tablet thing was coming down the pipe like he got that he was a big advocate of yeah, it and early he on it. he wanted tablets to happen and he missed hard because he really believed that um you know the stylus and so the keyboard are, ne are necessary yeah and i remember and watching this one goes, demo he did for like bus scheduling stuff and yeah you watched that it was went, a, no i would never buy a tablet for that. That is that no. was that was such a quintessential one where you like had this big bulky computer and he had this pen that he could easily lose and it's this like hundreds and hundreds of dollars computer that yeah you could look up bus schedules and everybody was like you really think people that are gonna take the bus are gonna be using their little <laughs> you know laptop as they're like as they're going around I mean I don't want to be prejudiced or nothing but that uh. I'm being prejudiced about this one. Yeah, usually people who can afford a computer that they walk around with are the kind of people that are taking the bus all the time. <laughs> like, you know, Twitch. the world is not made up of San Franciscans that take the bus everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and it was just a bad demo. Yeah. He should have picked a different one, but I also think that pointed to some of the problems where he didn't have a great use case in mind right. for it. Exactly. And that was well, one that he thought of and went, oh, this would be useful. And, you know, because he's thinking public transportation. That's the wave of the future. People aren't going to be in cars anymore. That's where his head was at. And right. you could tell he's from the Washington area. And, um, and it's just not the rest of the world. Which and, yeah. is, is a huge thing. I mean, you know, the, when you think about it, like, the difference between the iPad and those tablet computers was not a, a vast gulf, especially in general, you know, use cases. They're, they're relatively similar. They're both computers, you know. But the big difference was is that, you know, Steve Jobs thought of it as a, you know, a large screen that you watch TVs on and, you're, you, know, watch, you know, surf the Internet and watch movies on. You know, Steve Jobs, Steve... Are. Bill Gates looked at it as something completely different, you know, and and you know, they're you know they still want they still want the tablet to be a productivity device. That's you know they they that you know that's the that's one of the big ad campaigns of Windows 8.1, Windows 8 in general. Yeah, is you know it's a it's it's for all parts of my life, not just goofing off, and you know, as somebody who has a desktop for work and. You know, a desktop for a desktop at work, a desktop at home for work, and a, you know, an iPad. Eh, I don't need my iPad for work, really. You know, it's I take notes on it, maybe. You know, I show pictures. At, yeah, I use it kind of for work, but it's not a. You know, it's not. And 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 I and you know, maybe long term, that's the wrong way to look at it. But the difference was is that Steve Jobs found a use case that made sense at that price point. Um, you know. Yeah, Bill Gates didn't, and and the but there is the argument, and that uh, that uh, Gruber makes, and I and I I completely agree with it. Is that Bill Gates had a vision, and it was a vision that you know radically changed the world, um, made him the you know the richest man who wasn't a you know dictator in the world, and you know. And, and well, they were saying when he first, when they first made that statement, they hadn't even sold Basic yet. It was just a vision. And then when they like declared it publicly, uh, they were in their sales were in the tens of thousands. Right. And you know, and they're like, and he's thinking billions, and they're just like, man, his brain is so far out there. Which I mean, clearly he's also articulated again with the with his foundation on some of the stuff he wants to do. You're just like. Whoa, that's that's crazy. So it'll be interesting to see if yeah. he applies that same type of thought. It sounds like he'll be taking a more micro level right. approach to it. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked if you know he does contribute to some broader so if, based vision, which I think would be great for Microsoft. Competition is awesome. I'd love to see them get after it. And, yeah. Especially against Google. I mean, the two of them duking it out would be you know super fun. Yeah, 
I you know because I because I, mean, fan I know. <laughs> well, it's just it's you know it doesn't uh, like her and like, for HP. They're partners with both. It's awesome. We, right. We encourage and, it all. Yeah, and and I you know the the fun part about those two is that they're both they're both Goliaths in their own right, and so you know they really could go toe to toe. But like you said, you need Bill Gates. If if Sasha and Bill Gates can you know come together on a really you know on a vision that really ha like can change you know. A vision that's going to take a decade, you know, and 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 it's funny when we talk about I, months ago we talked about that article where you know what happens when the compute what happened when we tried to say let's build the technology of ten years from now today, let's you know that that happened twice and um you know one of them was oh what was it was it Cisco building you know they tried to build computers that could that were ten that were going to be a hundred times more powerful than the current day ones to try to develop oh, right, right. and to ask the question and a lot of that like you know were computer science you know leaps and bounds happened there because they tried this crazy idea of what's the next decade going to look like and the other one was you know during the uh, the you know dot com boom we basically built an internet of a decade future and you laid all the the pathways for this explosive growth that happened and if 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 Bill Gates and Sasha can actually come together and say what is going to happen in the next decade and if if there are a handful of people um, that you know that can probably accurately predict what the next ten years going to look like on that list Larry Page um, Steve Jobs Matthew and James Furlow, um, you know, <laughs> Bill Gates, you know, <laughs> you know, there, there's, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to strain myself, pat myself on the back, but um, <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna need you to do that for me, James. I'll pat you on the back too. Um, no problem. Teamwork. Uh, but you know, if 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 they can actually do that accurately and and really for the first time come up with a vision that's more than all of your entertainment on one device. In one room, you know, which is like, honestly, you know, the Xbox One, it's it it's a it's a it's a it is a a good improvement on the last generation of device, but it is it it is completely unimaginative about where the the gaming industry is going to be in ten years, and there's no reason to to expect that they're really pushing it forward at all. And something really disruptive, like I don't know, the Oculus Rift. That could actually change how people play video games, or or other, you know, uh, you know, maybe the Oculus Rift is the wrong example, but there are other things out there that could completely disrupt that. And just you watch, you could watch the Xbox One be the last big selling generation. And you wonder if there's anybody at Microsoft that's really asking the question, what's gaming going to be like in ten years? You know, what are phones going to be like in ten? Years? What are pocket computers going to be like in ten years? Yeah. Should be we be worrying about Google Glass? Should we be worrying about smartwatches? Should we be even worrying about Windows at all? Does it make sense to have desktop computers in ten years? And if anybody can ask those questions or answer those questions, you would hope some like Bill Gates could. And um and and you know Sasha is he's obviously can execute the departments he's had out had you know oversight over have done very well, um and which means I think he can at least get behind visions of the future, um if not come up with them himself. So I don't know I'm hopeful for it. I you know I'm, I like Microsoft. I don't I you know I don't I don't I don't like what I, I should say I hate quagmires of really great potential. Way more than I dislike, um, you know, particular policies of companies. You know, if if you see products that I don't like as much as another, you know, even if I'm not a, you know, I should say like that. That's to me. I I, I may not go out and you know buy Microsoft preference Microsoft stuff. May never. You know, I might always preference Google and Apple things, or it might switch all around. But as long as these companies aren't quagmired in in just, um. Whatever stupidity, where you're like, there's so much potential. <laughs> I'll I'll be happy, and and I I want to see that. That will excite me. So, yeah, that's my opinion. All right. Uh, one final thing before we move on. Uh, clearly, okay. he's not doing this for the money anymore, but it doesn't hurt to be CEO of a large company like that. Nope. He um he gets a slight raise, and and I mean that when I say slight. Um, because uh, his his base salary is now one point two million dollars, 
Good job. That's Get it. That no matter what. If he does really, really well, um, he could earn up to $3.6 million, um, and that's for the fiscal year 2015. I don't know when it starts, but he could do that. And he also did get a nice little stock award of $13.2 million. So that's nice. Boom. For a total of $18 million. Now, what's interesting about this is that last year, as the server and tools head, El Presidente, he earned $7.7 million. So I'm serious when it's slight from a... Yeah. I mean, it's almost a 100% increase, but it's, uh, you know, he... He's not doing it for the money at this point, um, which I guess is good when you get to that level. You don't want someone doing it for the money. You need to have that higher calling and purpose, yeah. which, P.S., just a little side note. Last year, Balmer, uh, he received $1.26 million in total compensation, so made significantly less. Now, having said all that, he does have $33 million – or no, th $333 million shares – Outstanding of Microsoft stock, about four percent right. of the company, and, so and, and they were worth like fifty bucks a, share, right? like 50 bucks a share, right? Mm. Uh, is that how much? I think it's only like twenty-five dollars, isn't it? Is it? Okay. Well, um, yeah, whatever. See here. That's still finance.google.com. Like, can you do finance.microsoft.com? No. No. Oh, finance.bing.com. Oh, oh. Let's see here. What is it? MSFT. Yeah. Right. Microsoft Corporation. Give me it's loading, loading, loading. Oh, 36. So it's 36 so, million. How many? How many million? 333 million. It's a lot. He's worth like a billion dollars. Oh, that's nice. Like 10. So is it 10 billion? My bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, his, he, I, he's, he doesn't need the, the compensation. So, yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, eighteen million dollars to to run Microsoft, and um, those awards will be paid out over three years, I guess, or in three overlapping five-year periods. I don't even know what that means. I read an article um, today so, about about um, that was that was like a huge indictment of the current state of the technology. Um, industry, especially the leaderships, and basically it was like chastising them as like they're basically Walnut or Wall Street clones, where they're just insanely profitable. They're doing all sorts of consolidation of technology. They're buying up tiny companies. You've got big the big three. He was criticizing them that they're both they're mostly white males that are making all the money. You know, really, like, okay. I mean, I guess whatever. I mean, I, I, they, uh, have you? That one's that one's a big one to get into, but you know that that. But it was just like it was this big, and it's funny when you get into these these this type of money. Yeah, outside of the that that is one point. Outside of the the Wall Street banks, there are not many people that get compensated like that. You know, even in the CEO ballpark, that's that's pretty good money. Um, yeah, not you know. bad. So. We'll obviously be following closely, and any missteps we will document thoroughly. Anything they do well, we will mention in passing. And oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll, prob I'll probably quiet. complain more about Quagmires and and you know missed opportunities. But you know that's what we speaking do. Speaking of yeah, that's what we do. So speaking of Quagmires, yeah. um, are you trying to get out of one? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we are AT&T customers, um, have been for quite a while. Uh, when was it? Um, it's my junior year of college. That was too long ago. Um, well, it was... It was uh, 2007. 2007, yeah, because... It was the uh, wow, that was weird. So in my head, that actually like we said that in in sync, which I think means that in your ears it probably didn't come. No, we we sounded the exact same time to me. Really? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, um, that was the year that the iPhone, the original iPhone, was released, and that was the reason why I jumped shipped from our Madre over to AT and T. Yeah, and at that point, I actually didn't have a cell phone because I couldn't afford one, and yeah. still, still couldn't, couldn't really afford one. one. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you were an awesome big bro and helped me out for longer than you should have probably, but I appreciate it a lot. Um, and uh, problem. Uh, but yeah, so at this point, um, 
Uh, I'm sick and tired so of it. So we've been with him for five years now? Is that is my math right? No. Six years. Six years. Well, it'll be six years in, what was it, October or something like that? I don't know. Something like that. Um, but they, uh, yeah, so this last year, um, I got a smartphone finally, um, which I can't believe it's only How been How many are you on now? I, this, is my, this is my fourth iPhone. Um, yeah, and right. if you were listening to the show at the time, obviously I went through my I went through my crazy phase where I got my I got a uh, Nokia Lumia 920, I got a Samsung Galaxy S3. They were the top of the line smartphones from the competing companies at the mm-hmm. time. I ended mm-hmm. up sticking with the iPhone 5 because I like the audio output input better. Um, and that was my primary deciding factor. Um, and uh, fair enough. And, uh, um, or at least that's you know what I tell everybody to pretend like I'm not just a huge Apple fanboy. Um, I did like the keyboard best on the Lumia. I wish I could go back to that frequently. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, but so this is the big thing, big deal. I'm uh, I now officially you know I'm, I'm signed up for the three gig plan on AT&T, and I go over my data allotment every month, um, but mostly. And every time you go over. It costs you ten a gig. It costs you ten bucks. So um, they're charging me an extra ten dollars every month, and it's just driving me nuts. And um, I don't get any tethering. Um, if you were to, if I were to increase my plan to the five gig plans, which costs an extra twenty dollars a month, which would bring me up to about me to about seventy dollars um, for my my service, I would get five gigs and tethering, um, which would arguably make my data go by even faster because. Um, I'd be tethering, and I could. Yeah, you'd be I'd, tethering. I'd actually use it, um, and that would be a bad thing. <laughs> but I still have it's to. It's almost be, like know. they thought about that. I know, and I and at this point, I know I tell people it's like that's just random web browsing. Now, granted, I am a savage web browser. Like I get that, but I do not stream music. Did you I say not... savage? Savage, yeah. It's savage. Yes. Okay. Just checking. Um, not savvy. Savage. New no, savage. I like it. Um, and uh, I, cause I, 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 tr- I, obviously I burn through three gigs a month just looking at pictures, gifts, and and articles. Like I, I go crazy. I do not stream music. I do not stream video. I do not download anything. Um, that's and and which I think is terrible. I mean, like I, that's just I can't believe I don't get to stream any music. I just oh my gosh. Um, it drives me nuts. They they drive me absolutely crazy. Um, but I say all that to say T-Mobile... Do you not um, have Wi-Fi at your office or something? Uh, I'm trying to figure out how that works. My boss doesn't listen to this I show. Just, I, don't even get, I, don't even get, I don't even get close to that. So and my bo- I feel my, like I do a lot on my phone. My boss doesn't listen to this show, so I feel like I can say this. Uh, I don't think he does. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he doesn't. Um, uh, oftentimes he'll come like to me a week later. Hey, did you hear about this technology? Like, yeah, we talked about it on the show like two weeks ago. Right. And then I pretend like I didn't, so that he can feel all cool. Um, but I uh, he can't track anything that I'm doing on my phone if I'm over LTE. Um, but and he tracks everything. And he's pretty cool oh. with a little bit of uh, casual, you know, not doing what you're supposed to as long as you get everything done on time. Um, but you know, I can I can get a little carried away, and. Uh, <laughs> Um, so so yeah. it's not the fact. Okay, just to clarify here, what he doesn't like is the fact that you're sucking their use, their bandwidth. That does. I'm that assuming does. it's all fixed. But. Well, it's funny. Our, our we do have a bandwidth problem because we do this. We do everything um, voice over IP and through AT and T, and they've got awful service. Mm-hmm. We get like two megs down um, at our office. I get ten times the service at home, and. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it's it's ridiculous. Fantastic. I know, and so I, I'm almost I'm almost better. <laughs> yeah. So LTE not only is it, it you know so not only is my phone does it surf faster, it saves the bandwidth for the company, and I can use it for you know stupid things, and my boss will be none the wiser. Um, and, right. Yeah. So that's 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 the long and short of it. So what I really want is I really want unlimited, and uh, I looked into T-Mobile, and they're uh, um, I've looked into actually a lot of the different services, and T-Mobile's got the best coverage for for my area of living. Actually, they've got great coverage for my area of living, mostly what I do. Um, I've talked to a couple of people, gotten some anecdotal information as along with marketing stuff, and. Uh, 
I just got anecdotal stories that confirm the marketing stuff, so for whatever that's worth. Um, but I think the long and short, you know, for for service and usage, and I think the long and short of this is, I, I'm just sick and tired of the whole AT&T like, I'm willing to, you know, I'm I'm stuck to a contract. I've got no op options. I don't get to try different things, and it drives me nuts. Um, and 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 it's it's stupid things like I'm going to uh, I'm going to Spain next week for work. By the way, we have to do the show Saturday morning because I'm going to Spain next week for work. Um, I already scheduled. <laughs> awesome, and uh, um. We uh um and when you're in you know when you're abroad, AT and T has these different abroad plans because it's a you know it's a global GSM phone, um and uh, what drives me nuts is that they charge like it's like you can get like they got a plan that's no data, thirty text messages and like thirty minutes of uh call time for ten bucks a month. And you're like, that's that's nothing. That's that's useless. And they're like, well, use Wi-Fi and just you know, you can use iMessages over Wi-Fi. You can do voice calls over Wi-Fi, and you're good. Unless you're in Europe and they've got bad Wi-Fi coverage because you know, no Wi-Fi. They don't have like free Wi-Fi over there, which is pretty common. And just like so, you know, whereas like everybody, because everybody in Europe, what they do is they all have contractless phones. So if you switch countries or you switch carriers, you go into this to the Seven Eleven or you know equivalent, and you buy a SIM card for the month you're there, and you just use that SIM card with that number, and all of a sudden you've got access. Well, you know, I, I can't do you know. I, I, I would do that, but AT and T's you know all messed up, and T Mobile. Um, with their unlimited on everything plan, there's a complimentary 300 minutes of talk time, which is more than enough for me, especially considering the fact that there's unlimited text messages, text messages and unlimited data included when you're abroad in over 130 countries. What the That's heck nice. is going? I know, yeah. And so it's just, uh, it's just one of those things where it's just, you know, it's. To me, it seems like an easy decision. I'm I'm very ready to get over there. But one of the first steps in this whole process, I'm gonna actually buy out my own plan. So because I want to take my iPhone with me, so I can get the iPhone six when it comes out. And uh, um, well, and T-Mobile will pay your ETF, won't they? Yes, yes. That that is a big thing. You know, they I thought it was just for the because they were like we'll buy out your entire family. And um, I thought you had to get your entire family plan off. That's not the case. You can just do one line at a time. They'll still do it for you, which nice. is cool of them. They will do it up to five people, which is nice because a family plan only covers five people. Um, the trick is you have to give them your phone or an equivalent phone. It doesn't have to actually be that phone. So if you have like an older, cheaper phone or you bought one offline and then sell yours, you can actually make money in the long run. They they'll give you credit if it's if you got like a 64 gig iPhone 5s, um, they're not gonna just they'll give you credit for it so you can get an equivalent phone. But then you have to you also have to buy one of their phones with their two year you know pricing thing, um, which is like oh for, yeah yeah uh, you know so it's like that adds money to it and I say I want to own my phone outright. Um, and I can, and I'm fine with the iPhone 5 until the iPhone 6 comes out with all that sapphire glass, um, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but, yeah, that, so for me, it just seems like a compelling... I've, I've actually looked at the numbers, and it's it makes sense for me to stick with the iPhone... And this can, and the nice part about it is it gets me completely out of contracts. If I want to go back to AT&T because I like the coverage more, I can get AT&T Go. Um, if I want to try out Metro PCS because I'm within their range, which generally I am, I can try out Metro PCS for a month. Um, I can try out, you know, I can do T-Mobile as long as I want or as short as I want. Um, you know, I've just I got so many options all of a sudden. It's the moment that I, you know, I. Uh, Give up AT and T's contract, but this is the big trick. I gotta get my phone unlocked. These guys are crazy. Okay, so I went into T-Mobile and they said, "Get your phone unlocked as soon as possible because it makes the transition easier." So the AT and T will probably give you guff, but you just have to like call them and call them and call them until they let you. And I was like, "Okay, cool." So I went to the AT and T store and I, I asked them, and they said. Yeah, you should be able to get it unlocked, even though it's still under contract. They said it'll just be difficult. So this is what you got to do: go online and sign the online request form. I was like, okay. And they're like, that's probably not going to work. 
And especially because at that point I was like, I wanted to go to Spain, and or I'm going to Spain. I want to unlock so I can use a SIM card there, just so that I have internet and phone there, um, even though I'll still be on AT and T, um, and you know I'll still have a contract with AT and T. They're like, but call in and explain to them what your situation is. I didn't say anything about T-Mobile. I didn't want to hit them with that bat yet. Um, and uh, you know, and just explain your situation, and you might have to call back a few times, try to get the right person um, to uh, see if you can't, you know, unlock, get them to unlock the phone. But once you got the like the online petition thing going, because the the first you said the first thing they're gonna do is to tell you to go online and do it. So just get that out of the way. I'm like, okay, fine. So I, uh, so obviously I called you and said, hey James, can you? You know, go online. You know, you either sign on an account. Can you go online? Can you do this for me? Cool, no problem. You did that. Um, like a half an hour later, I call in, and I get this really nice lady on the phone, and uh, uh, we, I I explain to her, I'm like, okay, so this is my deal. I'm going abroad. I've got your abroad plan right now. Um, it is insufficient for what I need. Um, I would like, and I'm I'm not going to get one that is sufficient. Um, so I need an unlocked phone so I can buy a plan while I'm there. You know, it's pretty simple. I just want to do this real quick, and I'd like it done in a week. And she goes, "Well, your phone's under contract, so we can't do that." It's like I was like, "Well, like, how can I get it done? Because I need this to get done. I need to be able to use a SIM card over there." And she's like, "You can only do it if you don't have a con if you're not under contract." I'm like. Well, then I'm going to need to buy out my contract right now so that and so that I can get it unlocked, and then I'm going to go to T-Mobile. To I'm going to cancel my, my plan with you completely. And as soon as I said that, all of a sudden she was like, well, let me talk to the manager and see what we can do. I was Bye. like, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I and, and so you know this is my plan. Like give them give them the carrot. Hey, I like your service. I'm not leaving you or anything. Don't worry. I just wanna I just wanna do this little crazy thing every once in a while. It's not gonna affect you none. Don't worry about it. You know that's that was my plan. I was trying to be generous. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, but but as soon as you come at me, I'm gonna I'm gonna threaten you. And I've read enough articles. I know that the the key phrase nowadays at AT and T is you say T-Mobile, they freak out, and all of a sudden you know doors open. So I get the manager on the line. They're like it took them like twenty. Many minutes to get on the line, and I'm, I'm like sitting there listening. You know, wow, really? Oh, wait, I know. And so finally, the, the the manager comes on the line. And he goes, "Hey, um, so this is the deal. I'm like, I I got a solution for you. I'm like, okay, cool. And um, I appreciate that. He goes, so sometimes people find this uncomfortable, but he goes, but this is our this is our solution. He goes, we are not allowed to unlock phones while they're under contract. It's a strict AT and T policy. It's like, okay. And he goes, but we have a workaround. I was like, oh, perfect. I like workarounds. That's fine by me. He goes, this is what we're going to do. We've got $185 left on your contract. You're going to buy out the rest of your contract, cancel your contract. Um, as soon as you don't have a contract anymore, um, we will, uh, we can unlock your phone. He goes, it takes 48 hours to five days maximum. At which point, as soon as it's unlocked, we'll let you know it's unlocked. You call us back. We'll reinstitute your plan. We'll give you a full refund, and then you just you you know, and then you you pick up right where you left off. You know, no big deal. You know, none the wiser. Your phone's unlocked. I was like, so I'm gonna say awesome. So basically, I just have to float. Uh, you know, 200 bucks for a week. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. Let's do that. And he goes, well, and your contract's canceled, so you won't have any phone service. Yes. Love it! at and wins! Yeah, like, really, really. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be an at and customer anymore then. Um, and I was like, I, you know... Man, I, I'm, they I just... Say, just, uh, I... Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and I, I was just like, well, I can't do this right now because I still need my phone, so I need to figure out what I'm going to do instead. Um, how I'm going to, to make this work, I absolutely need to happen, so I'm going to call you back. And this at this point, I'm just like, well, obviously, I just need to keep calling back. Um, so uh, um, so the next day, it's, it was a busy work, w w week at work. Next day, I didn't get a chance to call. Next day, I didn't get a chance to call. I'm like, Wednesday, I'm like, okay, I'm going to call. And Wednesday morning, you forwarded me an email from AT&T your pro you know, your your request to unlock the phone has been processed. I was like, oh, geez, now here it comes. They're like, and it has been um, confirmed. So give it 24 hours, and your phone will be unlocked. 
All you have to do is reset your phone, and uh, your phone will be unlocked. Yeah, because I filled out some online form for you. Now, yeah. can you confirm that your phone is indeed unlocked? Well, so this is the best part. I went on the AT or went on the Apple's website and uh, and <clears throat> read through their stuff. And what they say is, you need to if you do not have a different SIM card from a different company, you need to reset your phone in order to un complete the unlocking process. But if you have a SIM card from another company, you just pop the SIM card in. You you type in your code. You like you hit one or two buttons and you know you follow the prompts and then your phone's unlocked. And I was like, well, okay, that seems like a lot easier solution than completely resetting my phone, especially because at this point I still it's it's Wednesday afternoon. I still think I'm going to Spain Saturday morning and gonna be on a flight for 15 hours. I've got like eight shows downloaded on my iPhone. I don't want to like entire seasons. I don't I don't want to have to re-download everything in two days and you know or like my entire music collection. I don't want to miss anything. I'm like, okay, this is really important. If I can avoid resetting my phone at this moment, that's critical. Well, our dad's already on it on T-Mobile. So I was like, I called up, I called up her mom and was like, hey mom, I want to get dinner Thursday night before I go to uh, um, Spain. Nice. Just, you know, one last hangout. Which, okay, I'm, I'm, ah, I'm ah, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. okay, legitimately you le told him, you told legitimately him. legitimately, I did I, it, it, it's been too long since I hung out with our parents and That's I did want to spend time with them. Um, uh -huh, it just uh -huh, so happened uh -huh. that all of a sudden it was like mission critical that I spent time with them. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Thursday night we sit down to dinner, uh, get out a paper clip, swap a uh, um, swap SIM cards, make a phone call with my dad's our dad's SIM card. Shows up as our dad's phone number on, on our mom's phone, and cool. phone's unlocked. So. You know, it's funny. I mean, like, and and part of the reason why I ask is I know I, you gave me that number to put in, yeah. but like, it asked for all of my information. Yeah. So the entire time I'm like, gosh, I hope this doesn't do my phone. It actually <laughs> does yours. Yeah. Because other than that one, whatever that that code yeah, was, it's I don't like even know. It's it's, it's weird. It's yeah. It's it's a. Uh, it's like the ID. It's different than the serial number. It's like that. I don't know. Yeah. But it's 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 yeah, how they yeah, actually yeah, identify it, the phone. Yeah, which is what I figured it was, because like I said, everything else was mine. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, okay, it's all right. So I'm glad that it worked. Cool. Yeah. Now you just now, and so now when you do go to España, which by the way, you got to tell me which city you're going to eventually. Bilbao. Um, Bilbao. Yeah. Where is that on the country? <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's northern Spain. It's Basque country. It's the uh, the the radicals who want to uh, s separate and start their own country. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to be working in the city so, of Mondragon, but Mondragon. Okay, so when you go there, um, you just get a new SIM, pop it in, and whatever that phone number is is your phone number, and you're ready to rock, huh? Right, and there's actually a website that I'm probably gonna venture around on this week that you can you can pre-buy your SIM cards. Um, That's so a good that, idea. Yeah, so that you don't have to find them in the airport. You've already it'll That's tell you what idea. your phone number it is. So you can tell all your friends and family, hey, this is my phone number. Mm. So when you get a Spanish phone number, don't worry about it. It's my phone number. Um, so now, if I if you called me, am I gonna get international charges for talking with you? I don't know. Is that how that so. works? No. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't have know. you have you gotten them in the past? I've called you from England. I don't I don't think that's how it works. Well, I know that's an international plan, but you know, so I don't know. I always semi freak out when folks from other countries call me on my cell phone. I'm always like, uh, how does this work? Okay, yeah. let's talk really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, don't know. I could just look at my bill, I suppose, but I always freak out. I, see. I I guess I guess what my my broader point in all of this is that or my 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 takeaway from it was I couldn't believe that you know I I didn't expect the online request form to work and I, you know I'm sure I'm sure what they did the only explanation I can think is either that it's just they actually it's where they make it really easy for you to do it or they looked at us and said we've been with them for six months or for six years well, I'm midway through a contract I have an international plan and they've got a computer that actually does some actuarial tables and asks the question what's the chances that I'm gonna jump to T-Mobile and if I have an unlocked phone and they came back as I was low risk and so they said yes I mean I guess I, I think you give AT&T way too much credit yeah okay there's absolutely no way 
a person looked at it and there was some algorithm that told it to do it. It just took it that long to propagate through the system. And that's that's well, had well, then, no well, way then, there was well, someone I guess, who reviewed I, it. I, well, I guess what the question to me was, under what circumstances would they not approve it? Why did they approve me? You know? I don't know. I I think from the online forum standpoint, it's just, yeah, I don't, I don't think... Hmm. Huh, you give them way too much credit, man. Way okay. too much credit. I mean, they're conniving people. Don't get me wrong, but I just, I'd be shocked if the system were that smart. Uh, yeah, well, I was shocked that they approved it. I, you know, I figured that that was which is part of what been... tells me there's no one looking at it because they didn't do it when a person was looking at it, or you know, right. they were gonna play games with you, and they do it this way. Oh, look, it works. Don't even have to try. That's the back door that they don't know about. Right. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. super annoying. But the nice part about so when are you switching is, over to T-Mobile for, so, uh, for realsies? Yeah. So the game plan is I'm I'm saving um, uh, the difference of what I'll be paying. So that it's is going to cost me twenty dollars more a month, plus a small amount more a month. I'm putting all that into a savings account, and when that uh, savings account equals the cost of buying out the rest of my contract, I'm going to get out. Boom, lickety split. And it's okay. looking like if all stars align, um, April 20th, the day after my, um, my I guess will be my 16th month on uh, AT&T um, with this contract, uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be able to do it. And I'll go in and talk to the cute girl that helped me answer all my okay. questions and Sales girl, and I'll uh, add T-Mobile, and uh, I'll do the deed. I'm, right. I'm looking forward to it, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm going to make T-Mobile sorry that they ever offered free um, or unlimited internet to anybody. <laughs> so I will get my money's worth. <laughs> and tethering too, right? Yeah, well, two and a half gigs, complimentary. Which and uh -huh. you, know what the, you know what the greatest part about T-Mobile is? This is actually the part that makes it just fantastic. It's two and a half gigs of high speed. Mm. After that, it goes down to low speed. There's no overages for going for using two and a half gig more than two and a half gigs tethering. What? <laughs> That's inconceivable to me. That is so cool. I'm just I'm 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 overjoyed. I'm very excited about all this. Which means from now on, my maps are going to be on my on my uh, my iPad. You know? <coughs> I'm not going to have that little dinky map that everybody else uses on their phone. I'm going to get the full-blown Maps app when I'm driving around town, tooling all over the place. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, man. That's yeah. trouble. No, now, no. let's see here. T-Mobile. Let's see. where Coverage. Um, where am I? He's looking it up. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say where I'm at out loud, as if everybody doesn't know already. Yeah. Um, I'm in Arizona. That's where I'm at. <laughs> With the snow. Flagstaff, actually. It's high enough. It does get snow there. Um, oh, they're taking forever to load. Come on. Come on. So we, we send me regularly tell everybody where you live because we do everything over oh, Google. Taking too long. I'll do it later. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, cool. um, so, T-Mobile. Yeah. I like it. So, um, so, so this is this is related. If you don't let me jump in over here really quick. So speaking of the iPhone six, which um, I'm super excited to buy, definitely faux show gonna have um, sapphire glass uh, displays on the uh, you know 17 inch iPhone phablet. Um, the iPhablet. I hope they call it that. It's a terrible name. Um, but Google or Apple dropped some serious coin. Uh, to buy sapphire glass furnaces, which is how you actually manufacture the the glass um, pellet, basically. Is it, so, I, have you ever seen how they make um, glasses for like eyeglasses? No. So basically, you start out with these like glass discs um, that are like of a certain refractory, and then they have these tools that actually like sand them down and shape them even more, and then cut out the shape of the glass, the lens that they want, and then you pop them in. But they all start out as these like round billets, or thin billets of, of glass. Um, Makes sense. Well, yeah, that basically is the same process they use for 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 uh, um, for cell phones too, including sapphire. So um, 
Apple, you know, they've been setting up this sapphire glass uh, factory in Arizona that we've kind of mentioned on and off. But uh, Apple this week kind of leaked that they uh, they bought enough sapphire glass furnaces in the last year to manufacture all the glass for. I said it was 100 to 200 or 100 to 150 million iPhones. Um, that's a lot, and this is the best part. Uh, they got a glimpse into the uh, uh, to the actual, you know, uh, you know, orders that they've got. Not only have they actually received enough to do that, they've almost got another another equal size number of furnaces coming. Um, so Apple's getting into the sapphire glass, and in a huge, huge, huge way. Um, which is really cool. Um, I'm 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 pretty stoked on that because that's you know clearly the glass of the future. Um, and the best part about this is uh, you know it's funny because I read this kind of stuff and you know obviously that's a big deal and they're moving in that direction and and there's been enough rumors or it's kind of true. But there's there's this part of me that like stills like I don't know how big of a deal this is really. You know is this just somebody like. You know, making up numbers, talking about big stuff. Yeah. It's, like the, it's like the liquid metal stuff. Obviously, liquid metal is cool, but you know how you know it, it's an interesting amorphous material. The material science scientist in me loves it, but no iPhone's been made out of one yet. It's all still aluminum, still steel are the two primary tool you know metals. So how big of a deal is it when they build a factory that does it well? Taiwan or the, there's Taiwanese manufacturers are the guys that have been. Producing most of the sapphire glass in the uh, uh, for Apple and for everybody at this point, because because Apple uses it for the thumbprint scanners right now on the iPhone. And they also use it to for the lens cover on all of their phones, um, or all the yeah, all the iPhones and uh, iPads and everything. Um, so they use a lot of sapphire glass in small, 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 small quantities or small sizes, but large quantities. Um, and they've been buying it from Taiwan, and I guess. Uh, Yesterday, the Taiwanese manufacturers, like it's started to leak that they are freaking out, and um, because they're they've they in the last week have just started a massive rush to uh, copyright intellectual property because they suddenly realized that sort of like out of the blue, many and Apple's going to become the, the biggest manufacturer of sapphire glass in the world, and they don't know what that means for them, and. Um, for the company and, and this technology that they've been working on for a long time, um, so you know it's you know Apple's Apple has has made a really really big move here and it's exciting because you know they got this giant pile of cash and you know they always threaten to use it to do cool stuff and sometimes you just like get small acquisitions you don't actually see the the big movements like this and um, I guess the long and short of it is I'm looking forward to the iPhone six I think it will be. Uh, and they'll have some exciting, cool things to talk about. That um, you know, it'll be bigger as one thing, and it'll have um, an incredibly strong uh, glass case on it. So, oh, and you know, and 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 this, and actually, the other big thing that is that's probably going to happen is um, as they manufacture the iWatch um, or whatever they're building, um, that's probably going to have a glass screen on it, and you know. Saf that's actually where the, the biggest use of sapphire, of large pieces of sapphire glass are used, are high-end watches um, and mechanical digital watches because it doesn't scratch. So that's that's where that was that was the industry that led the you know sapphire glass manufacturers you know gave them reason to exist was watch faces. So that's clearly another use that it can be used for. So both of them really excited and looking forward to seeing how that goes and it's gonna be awesome. Cool year for Yeah. Yeah we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, something coming before that though are new um, somethings. What are they called? TLDs? Top level domains. Um, so obviously, I don't know, if you're listening to this show, you probably have an idea what a top level domain is, but in case you don't, um, a top level domain, a TLD, is um, uh, it, it's basically your dot com. So when you're, when you're on, um, oh, one second, one second. 
uh, when you're online and you, you put in your www dot whatever, um, you know, dot the end, you can do dot com, dot biz, dot eh. those, the dot coms, what comes after the second dot, that third aspect is considered your top level domain. It's kind of like, it's the, it's the, the highest category of different areas that you, before it starts all the routing, that's where, that's where the computers, as it tries to figure out where you are and where you're trying to go, um, that's what it looks at first. And uh, there's been a decent list of them for the longest time, .com, .biz, .org, stuff like that, .gov. Um, in the last couple of years, they opened up the country domains, which are kind of fun because they've given people you know, all sorts of... Uh, different yeah. um, dot whatevers they can do so it's like Mexico is dot MX and uh, um, Chad is dot TD and um, uh, my personal favorite is uh, uh, St. Helena because they're dot SH so if you wanted to go with something like um, uh, uh, trying to think of a good example that's not my example um, uh, well, whatever, I'll give it. Um, I've, I've always wanted to do a, a movie trailer review site and uh, um, do little short, witty, hopefully, reviews of trailers. Um, and I wanted to call it trailertrash.com, which don't don't go there um, unless you want to be bombarded by porn. Um, it's a, <laughs> but I um, you could get ta trailer tra dot sh and it would read trailer. Is that trash. available? Yeah, it is. Um, Why don't you buy it? It's expensive. How much is uh, it? Hundred bucks. Hundred bones. Dude, a year. Do... Okay, you talked me into it. Um, and uh, uh, so they, people have gotten creative with it. Well, they've now gotten into what they call. They've now expanded the list of general top level domains, and they call it the new gold rush. What's unfair here is they actually gave people. They gave um like insiders access to these early. So Apple, Google, you know, your big companies. It's not insiders. It's yeah. people who already own. They can register their existing registered. I think McDonald's names. should have to compete with you know Joe Schmo off the street. If Joe Schmo gets McDonald's oh. food first, he should win. It's not fair. I know. I not know. fair. It's yeah. No, life's not well, fair. Well, and, and that's the only one that McDonald's can go after, right? They can't. Yeah. Whatever whatever names they've trademarked are the ones that they're allowed to grab. If they haven't right. trademarked it, they can't buy it, and right. I think that's fair. Yeah, it's true. I, you know, but there's still a lot, a lot of, a lot that you can go out. Um, you know, it's still a pretty big deal. I mean, you know, there's all sorts that you can get. One of the cool ones that I saw, dot name. Um, this is, you know, so you get like Matthew dot name, and uh, this is actually the the, the 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 use case of this one. This one's a really interesting one because it's like it's actually designed so that multiple people can get the same one. Because what you're supposed to be able to use it for is um, Matthew at furlough dot name. So you can set up a uh, your own web client for your own, or your own uh, email client using your last name. Um, but if there was another furlough out there, James, you could also register a subgenre of of furlough.com. So you could have James at furlough.com. I could have Matthew at furlough.com. Um, because there's only a limited number of them, and they want to give people, you know access to them, uh, especially if you're Chinese, it gets even more complicated, so that was important to come up with a system like that. Um, uh, Wait, say, how does that work again? I don't know, oh, I was, I was, I only read the about dot coms in, you run out of, is that what you were saying? Well, yeah, like, so in, you know, so like dot com, obviously, if you get furlough.com, nobody else can register furlough.com, so you have furlough.com, so you can give me a Matthew at furlough.com. Um, but if you don't want to give it to somebody, they can't get it. Whereas, you know, if you if we were feuding and you bought furlough.name and had James at furlough.name, and all I wanted Matthew at furlough.name, um, I could I could go through uh, I could register that. And like I said, I'm not exactly sure how that that works out, but um, I I only started to read about it. But that's one of the things that goes with that. That's not most of these general ones are are like .com where one person gets the you know the name.com. So a couple of them out there is like dot bike, which I think is interesting. Um, dot aero, airport transportation or air transport um, industry. Dot Asia is a new one. 
uh, dot clothing. So like Calvin Klein has got uh, Calvin Klein dot clothing, and you can actually type that in right now, and it'll bring you to the Calvin Klein dot com website. Um, estate is out there, so for real estate, um, so you could go furlough dot estate uh, if you wanted furlough family homes dot estate. Not to give away your secrets. Um, uh, da, 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 da. You got gallery graphics. Guru, Guru was a big one. Apple went through and copyrighted basically, or got every, basically everything they have a copyrighted to term for for dot guru, guru. So Apple dot Guru, Guru iPhone dot Guru, iP iMac dot Guru. They got a bunch of the dot Gurus right off the bat because they like that. Um, and it's kind of how they roll. Uh, dot jobs, which I think is interesting. This one's a, um, a TLD designed uh, to be added after the names of established companies with jobs to advertise. At this time, owners of company.com domains are not permitted that to post jobs to a while, third right? party. Has it? I thought so. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Um, photography, plumbing. I Really? But I guess. Um Post, which I think is dot post for the postal service, which there's a certain irony there, um, as it as the internet is what's killing the postal industry, uh, <laughs> um, and then obviously dot xxx has been out there for a while, but ah, oh, it's cool. Dot ventures dot travel, hey, yeah, it's, it's neat. These are kind of fun. Um, I keep wanting to come up with something clever, um, and and the other cool part about this is that like as this becomes a bigger and bigger thing. All those ones that I've wanted forever but couldn't get, like frobots.com. Um, if you can come up with a, 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 a robots, yeah, yeah, it's a good oh, one. You wanted. <laughs> I want to do like I want, you know I wanted to do a furlough. I wanted to do a um uh I wanted to do a robots robotics website, sort of just like an educational thing. I think that would be fun. Um, and so that one was already taken. Yeah, frobots is already taken. F robots, yeah, yeah. And you know what the worst part about it is? They're not even using it as robots. They own robots. There's one that's robots, robotics, and something else. Um, and and none of them have a robot wearing a fro. I'm like, guys, come on. It's just like <laughs> this, this is so this, obvious. I say this writes itself, guys. Jeez, Louise. Um, so that that drives me crazy. Oh, so I got I. Funny. Yeah, so now I gotta, I gotta like, and oh, you know what? Frobots.guru. That's the one I gotta get. I gotta go and get that, cause that's what I want it to be. I want it to be an informational, like you can come here for cool information, and um, yeah, that's the one I need. Don't you think anybody... these things will actually take off? Do you no. think they'll actually take off? No, they're I mean, all, they're all designed to, like... to reroute back to dot coms at this point. I, you know, I want, yeah. Say what you're gonna say. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, I still feel like the dot com is just like it's so standard that the average person wouldn't even understand. Uh, you know, I don't know where it's like dot limo or dot limited. I guess I would get that one. But you know, like dot community. Really, I'm I'm gonna look at it and be like, check us out at www.yourschool.community. Well, I, I think there's 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 two reasons why they take off. Number one, in 20 years, every variation of .com will be taken. So if you want something that is you know a legitimate use of .plumbing is a perfect example because our dad buys um there was a uh, uh, there's a company that he buys equipment or, you know parts from for he does underground plumbing. Um, he does lays piping and stuff, digs stitches, and one of the suppliers that he buys from was trying to build, trying to come up with a website name, and the owner was like, I don't mind us building a website, but it's got to have a, a good URL, and all the ones they wanted were taken, and our dad finally, like, had a, a moment of, like, duh, this is obvious, and called up the owner and was like, what you got to go with is San Jose name of company dot com. Obviously, and the guy was like, "Oh, perfect," and that's what they went for, which is works for now until somebody else does something similar. Um, whereas they could go, you know, num name of the company dot plumbing, and you know, you could. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I think at this point, it's. I think at this point, they all act as rerouting stuff, where it's like, you know, Calvin Klein owns everything. Um, Calvin, you know, each one of these, it owns Calvin Klein dot name, Calvin Klein dot museum, Calvin Klein dot signals, sig, sig, 
sing singles, just in case, because you know you don't want to lose it. But um, I think you know there comes a point where it makes sense. That Frobotics is a perfect example of you know where I you know I want it and can't get it, and nobody else is using it the way I want it. So eh, you know, and are people gonna find it? I, they can Google it, and if they're and, and the thing is is and this is the this I guess is that's the, true. And you say this is the thing. What you're gonna Google is. You know, how does pulse width mag modulation look, work? And if my website's popular, it doesn't matter if it's a .com or a .guru. I'm going to come up first. And eventually, people will go, yeah, if you want to learn, just go to, you know, robotics.guru. And, and it, content will sell these new ones or necessity. You've run out of .com names and you don't have another, uh, other options. And then content, Some at some point, people will get accustomed to the fact that there are these others. Top level domains, and you know, and just the nature of how the internet works at this point with you know search engines, um, it's kind of point. You know, it's it's actually the reason why I'm I like the idea of this because I don't mind going different routes because in the end nobody's gonna type in the name themselves. They're just gonna Google it. You know, I want to go to Frobotics, and and that's the thing is if you get enough traffic and you have enough links. And you do everything you're supposed to to you know for your search engine optimization. Frobotics is going to return .guru first in Google um, because I'm the most popular website, and it doesn't matter what mine is. Um, but I got the name I wanted, so I don't know. I think it's I think they will take off. I think it could take another ten years. Uh, but I think at some point you'll notice that there'll just be these subtle changes. Popular websites start, you know, your your mega companies. Um, well, and and then I think I guess obviously what happens is at some point, um, I get big enough where I can just, you know, I'm I get enough traffic for Frobotics.com where I can buy, um, or Frobotics.guru where I can buy Frobotics.com and reroute.com to Guru. Um, like delicious. Right, exactly. So I, I don't know. I, I think so. I think it's good. I think it's. I think they'll. You know, they'll be for for your really big companies. Yeah. Well, for companies, exactly. Yeah. You'll you'll stay. You'll keep the .dot coms, and they'll be the predominant, most used ones. But I think for you know, for the you know, everybody else, your hobbyists, as people get better and better at this, and it becomes more and more common to have your own websites, um, it'll make sense to use these other ones. Okay, um, I'm gonna say one more. Um, believe it or not, it's already been two hours. Wow. Um, yeah. So just real quick, um, which I don't know if that's gonna be possible, but we're gonna try it. Uh, Twitter did their quarterly announcements this last week. Um, yeah. Didn't turn out very well. Their stock was down like twenty to twenty-five percent. That's afterwards significant. Yeah, they lost like eight billion dollars in market value, and um, the big question was why, and uh, the big reason was that their um, their list of new users only grew like three point eight percent over the previous quarter. Wow, that's and, not many percents. Yeah, and so the problem is that they have they have a growth problem essentially. So they went from like back in Q1 of 2011, they were at 68 million, and they grew. It looks like 25 percent, and then they went to 17 and 18, and then they dropped to nine and hung out in the nine or 10 percent range until Q2 of 2013. It looks like, and then at that point in time, they dropped down to five, and then the four, and now they're just above four. It looks like at uh, 3.8. And and so their issue that they're running into is that they're no longer growing, and and that's why people are like, oh boy. And you know how the stock market works, right? If you're not growing and specifically growing faster, this is the opposite. You get hammered for it. Right. And then they also showed a chart looking at um tweets during big television events, which I can't see the whole chart right now for some reason, but it's clearly flattening out. Um, right. So, 2013, and and then the other one, which I thought was super interesting about them, is that they were saying that so their most their current active user numbers are 241 million, okay, so just under a quarter of a billion, which is important because about a billion people have actually signed up for Twitter, 
and and so they're kind of like uh, their retention rate is somewhere in the mid twenty percent range. Really. Wow. And yeah, so they say it's not it's not great. And so their whole thing was like uh, Twitter needs to figure out a way to attract more people. But more importantly, they were saying they need to fix that leaky bucket problem. And people sign up, they get confused, or they don't understand it, and then they're out. And so that's one of the things where um, Twitter's trying to figure out how to do that, how to make the onboarding process, the tutorial section, a little bit better. So like one of the things they're going to start doing is they'll go through your phone book and they'll suggest people that you know in your phone book that are already on Twitter so that you can start tweeting them and replying <laughs> and, you know, getting... Which I'm kind of like, you guys haven't been doing that. I I mean, I've been on it long enough. I, I just... I don't know. I assumed it yeah. would have that already existed, and I just didn't see it because I've been on it long enough. Right. But, uh, apparently, it hasn't on uh, on iOS, and they just released it for Android. So I'm like, okay, well, that will definitely help. And um, yeah, just and the other one that I think is going to drive people nuts is they're experimenting with sending more. Um, first, they're going to send emails to inactive accounts, being like, "Hey guys, what's up?" And I love this one. They're going to send vaguely worded emails to people saying, like, you have a direct message. No, we're not going to tell you what it is. You have to go to the to twitter.com to actually read it. Sorry. Oh, geez. That is that annoying. Kind of which, which Facebook does some of the time. You know, we're mm. like, hey, you've got, you know, someone, they go, someone liked your status. What, you know, it's like, funny. I mean, oh, I... Which, which status was that? Say Google, <laughs> Google uh, you know, or Gmail separates your emails into stuff that's useful, stuff that's selling you stuff, and then social interaction. Yeah. And let me, so on my obvious, I'm the sort of person that leaves things on red, which I know drives people nuts to see, but I don't care. Um, I don't read everything, that's fine. So on my primary, I have about five things that are currently unread of, I think I've got 60 showing. On my promotions, I've got probably 10 that are unread of the 60 showing. On social, I have none read. Of the sixty nice. that's showing, so there you go. I, that would I mean I personally that has absolutely no effect on me, and I wonder how many people sure. are in similar boats because of you know innovations in Google and Yahoo Mail and now. So. Yeah, good question, good question. So Twitter, not to say they're in trouble, I don't think that's the case, um, but they've they've got a growth issue and a retention issue that they need to solve quickly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Otherwise, their stock price is getting hammered, which everyone said they were overvalued a little bit, but it was kind of like, whoa. That's, we weren't expecting it to be that bad. But yeah, there you go, man. There you go. Uh, any last thoughts, words of wisdom before we wrap this up? Seriously, uh, go see the Lego movie. All right. It's awesome. I will, I will have to make a point to do that. Um, very, very cool. Uh, okay, let's see here. i got to get all set up here. I do this. Well, everybody, thank you for... Oh, man, I pressed the wrong button. I hate it. <laughs> uh, thank you for <laughs> joining us. My name is James Furlow, and my builder of a brother is Matthew Furlow, and so we will talk next time. Sorry, I was totally on mute. I was uh, gonna say, where did you go? Have a uh, have a good rest of your Sunday evening. You too, man. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.